everyone, and welcome to Parsha Ponderings. I'm Rabbi Elizabeth Bonnie Cohen, and I'm excited to be joined by my colleagues this morning. Hi, Rabbi Hamilton, Rabbi Starr, and Talia. It's great to be with all of you. Um, so we're coming up this week, um, not only to celebrate Shabbat, but also to celebrate the final days of our, our Passover holiday. Um, and these final days are in the kind of Passover narrative are attributed to um, this kind of final scene of the parting of the sea and coming through to the other side. Um, and often a, a, a scene that's really lifted up in this narrative is um, Miriam dancing with her timbrels uh, on the other side of the sea and, and creating an opportunity for celebration um, among the women. And um, this has always struck me as a little bit frustrating actually, because I think, you know, the Moses gets to actually part the sea and then Miriam gets to dance with her timbrels. It just doesn't seem quite right to me. Um, and especially given how central uh, the women are, especially in the beginning of our Exodus narrative um, that, that, they've, that they were, Really, it was at their hands that this whole um, this whole process was set into motion. Moses' mother and his sister Miriam, and then uh, even Bad Paro and um, the the midwives and all of these female hands that really set our our story in motion. And I'm frustrated a little bit by the scene of dancing with timbrels as this kind of frivolous. Um, perhaps um, scene that, that we get at the, the other side of the sea. Um, so I'm just curious what you do with that, how you, uh, how you hold Miriam during this time uh, and the role of the, the women uh, players in our, 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 our narrative at this time. It's a great question. I just want to say that it's, I'm really glad you asked it, Rabbi Bonnie Cohen, because I feel like in some ways it's a kind of a test for us to, to, to try to make sure that we don't keep people who are integral to the entire story on the sideline or somehow in the periphery. As you correctly point out, without Miriam, Moses doesn't uh, retain his connection to his family as a very, very young infant. Um, uh, and indeed without Miriam, dancing and song, which even though she's not really credited for explicitly in the liturgy, which I think is your point, is actually what happens and what we acknowledge every single time we reflect on Micha Mocha, right? This idea of the prayer and the song at the sea and the dancing, dancing, of course, in Ecclesiastes is the opposite of mourning, it is the quintessential expression of joy. She's not doing it alone. There is a profound sense that she initiates it, but then the text says that everybody responds anu. They all respond to her. So she's the one who actually electrifies the community into dance and song. And it's interesting that in the Song of the Sea, it's Moses and the children of Israel. So he's sort of singing himself and in Arguably, it's a kind of antiphonal call and response piece of, 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 of praise that follows the parting of the sea. I'm thinking about uh, this year, I noticed for the first time that so much of the Seder is actually focused on oppression and slavery and not as much on the redemption and freedom. Um, and when we do talk about the redemption, it it's in terms of giving God credit and actually not in terms of giving anyone else credit. Um, God brought us out with a strong arm and outstretched hand. But if we're focused on slavery, if we're focused on oppression, Miriam doesn't really fit in that conversation because I think she is always constructive and hopeful. Mm. <laughs> um, and of course, always is a dangerous word to use. And we're in Vayikra and there's some exceptions to that always. Um, but I'm thinking of the Midrash about her as a child when um, Paro has decreed um, to kill all of the Jewish baby boys and Amram, Miriam's father, tells all of the men um, to stop um, con trying to conceive children with their wives. And Miriam has a prophecy. She, she can see that 
that is an, a deconstructive act, that that is, um, that is the act of someone who can't see any hope for, hope for the future. And so he, she confronts her father and says, Paro has condemned only the males and you've condemned the males and the females. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's because of that that Moshe was born and it, and so that really brings me to the sense of like oh she just doesn't belong in a story about oppression and slavery because she is a free mind and a free spirit I think Jews struggle uh to find joy hmm. I, I don't I don't I don't think it is a dominant note and I think that you know as a historian I'm very conscious of this is one of the reasons why Hasidism became so powerful in Eastern Europe, because Jews don't naturally default to joy. They default to commitment, to ethics, to intellectuality, to service, to a lot of wonderful qualities. But joy isn't necessary. I mean, the joy is a minor, it's like a music. It's, it's not major key, it's minor key. And I think that we struggle to get to sort of major key joy. Um, and even as you said, Talia, you know, we're, we're chasing redemption. You know, we get Greenberg, that great line of Yitz, you know, it's about chasing the rabbit. It's not catching it. It's not about catching it. Um, and I think that as you, you pointed out, Talia, the ability to go to an artistic place and to be creative in this very free spirited way, that's also most people can't get there either, which is what makes her so wonderful. Um, but yeah, she's a kind of an off-centered character in that kind of a way. Well, thank you for uh, helping to uh, lift up Miriam's presence and role uh, as we uh, move towards the, the shorelines of the Red Sea uh, and we'll celebrate its parting waters this weekend. Um, wish every, everyone a Shabbat Shalom uh, and a Chag Sameach. Chavez and good young tiff.